Greetings from the center of the universe. My name is Calvin. Now, if we want to measure the distance between two objects, we could use something like a ruler, but if those objects are farther away, we'll have to use something maybe like a measuring tape. But it's possible that the objects are even farther away than the measuring tape can be. So perhaps we could walk from one object to the other, counting our steps along the way, but that would be difficult for measuring really distant objects, like the distance between the Earth all the way to the moon. How many steps do you think you would need to take? And is that the only way to measure the distance? Five hundred seventy-two million eight hundred seventy-six thousand three hundred three. Five hundred seventy-two million eight hundred seventy-six thousand three hundred and no two hundred and. Oh, I lost count. Now, counting the number of steps from the Earth to the Moon isn't very realistic. So, is there any way that we can measure the distance from the Earth to the Moon? There is a way. It's called parallax, and I'm going to show you how it works. This is quite easy to do, in fact. The ancient Greek astronomers understood that the moon, although much, much more distant than the mountains on the horizon, was still closer than any of the stars up in the sky. You can see how the parallax method works. If you hold your thumb out in front of you and only look with one eye, you can see where your thumb is in relation to the background. If you look with your other eye, you'll notice that your thumb appears to move to a different location against the background. This apparent distance that it moves is related to the distance from your eye to your thumb. Now, if you Repeat this experiment, but with your thumb closer to your eyes, you'll notice that your thumb appears to move much more against the background. So, objects that are closer to you will appear to move more, and objects farther away will appear to move less. Now I want to try this with the moon. I should be able to see how far away the moon is, just like I did with my thumb, by using parallax. I went outside at night to look at the moon. I looked at it with my left eye, then just with my right eye to try to see how far the moon appears to move across the sky. But it didn't move at all. Do you remember what happened with my thumb when it was farther away from me? It didn't move much, did it? The farther away something is, the less it appears to move. So if the moon didn't appear to move at all, then it must be really far away. But is it as far away as the stars? We just can't tell. Let's try this method again, but instead of using our eyes, let's take pictures of the moon from different locations. If they're far enough apart, we might see the moon appear to move. Using Stellarium, I took screenshots of the moon in St. John's, Newfoundland, and in Vancouver, British Columbia. The moon's shift is due to parallax. This is as if you had one eyeball at each side of Canada. When it comes to the stars, they really don't appear to shift at all. If there was a nearby star, surely you could see it appear in different locations compared to the more distant stars. This is not perceivable, even if you had eyeballs on each side of the Earth. But astronomers have still been able to use this method for some nearby stars. How do they manage to do that? Well, we have to think bigger than the size of the Earth. Picture this. An astronomer takes a look at a star through a telescope and notes where it is compared to the background stars. Then, six months later, when the Earth is orbited to the opposite side of the Sun, the astronomer notes the position again. That is like having eyeballs on either side of the orbit of the Earth. In Stellarium, we can take a look at the distances to some of these stars here. Uh, for example, Antares, we can click on it to bring up a bunch of information. And looking through it, I find the distance, which says 553.75 light-years away. It even has some information on the parallax here. 
5.89 mil arc seconds. So that's like less than a millionth of a degree of parallax from one side of Earth's orbit to the other. We can also take a look at Spica, which has a distance of 249.74 light years and a parallax of 13 mil arc seconds. And if we try to find a really distant object, just some random one, we won't even be able to find the distance to it or even the parallax information because they're just too far away. I managed to find a star with a very small parallax, which means very big distance. 2,434 light years away. So that's only like 1.34 mil arc seconds, so teeny tiny dis difference. But it sure is amazing though that uh, a ancient technique could be used with together with uh, modern telescopes to be able to measure some very incredible distances. Exo Explorations is a grade school level educational resource that teaches about stars in the sky and the planets that orbit them. You can learn more at centeroftheuniverse.org slash exoexplorations.